What's up guys, Steve here. Welcome back to my page. This is about Turo and how to make your fleet run as smoothly as possible. If you guys are new to my page or new to Turo or just trying to figure all this out, it doesn't really matter. Just like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so I can get this info out to as many people as possible. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, with everything going on with your fleet, I don't care what you're doing, make sure you take those pre-trip photos. Make sure you're doing it and doing them well. I know the app says 10 to 15 pictures. Honestly, every time I'm throwing in there, throwing my pictures in there, I'm doing at least 100, 150 pictures. This may seem overkill, but realistically, it's probably it's probably underkill. You're, you're not getting enough info that you really need. Just remember, this is covering your butt. This is any kind of damages, especially with the way everything's going more more and more protecting. It's almost like they're protecting the renter more than the host, which I get they got to find that fine line. They've probably been burned by a lot of hosts, you know, Turo or Get Around or any of them. But it, it's almost like they're they're kind of taken away from the host, not really protecting them as much. So this is where you need to protect yourself and just make sure everything's documented. It goes back to the whole saying: if it's not on paper, it didn't really happen, which is kind of sad, but. It is what it is. So when you are going through taking these pictures and I'll have to do an actual video of you guys how to, or video for you guys of how to do your pre-trip photos, pre-trip and post-trip, but make sure you are getting your tire depth. You're getting, you know, close-ups of anything that you think may be an issue. Get close-ups of rims. You're going to get rim scuffs or curb scuffs, quarter panels, under carriage, not even under carriage, but just that bottom lip. If you got a lower sitting car, a bottom lip that tends to you know always scrape on the curbs when people pull forward pull forward too far or those bumper the tire stops and they put the bumper right over the top and as they back up it just kind of rips it off and breaks it just make sure you cover everything everything as far as making sure there's nothing hanging from the car your cluster so that way if there's any warning lights on ten typically what i tend to do is i'll jump in the car and I'll have it running so you can see the RPMs are up and take a screenshot, which you should be doing this regardless, but of the dash with the RPMs, mile per hour, and it shows any kind of warning lights that may be on. The only one that actually shows up when I take my pictures are is the seatbelt one, and that's because I'm not wearing a seatbelt when I'm in there, which now that I say this, I'll probably click the seatbelt just so there's nothing else on there, so there's no question whatsoever. This will help out tremendously. and. The only reason I say this is because if you just have the accessories on, now every light on the dash is on, and now at any point, the renter can basically say, oh, the check engine light was on, and they'll go back to your photos and be like, oh yeah, all the lights were on, so of course it must have been that way, you know, and there's nothing covering yourself. Document everything, 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 everything. Make sure scratches, dents, dings, anything that was already in the car, you can obviously note that but just make sure you're getting good, clear photos all the way around. Don't do video, just do video, or just do pictures. And I mean, it doesn't take much longer, and you have 24 hours before the rental to do this. I had a car come back, my Focus came back yesterday at four o'clock, and it went straight back out. Sadly, I had to wait that three hour buffer time with Turo, but it went back out in three hours later. Even with that three hours, I still had time to get this car back in and basically rolling. I was able to get all the pictures I needed to, clean what I needed to, did everything you need to. You have plenty of time. And I get it. If you do have bigger fleets, then you, you're you going to be rushing. But to run through and just go in a simple order, just make sure it's always the same every time so that way you never miss a beat. So document, document, document. Like I said, interior, uh, close-ups of the dash, close-up of cup holders, anything weird. All those little nook and crannies where ash can usually accumulate it's funny ash from smoking in a car if you guys know you know it will show up everywhere and for weeks to come because it's like you can almost never get rid of it it's it's ridiculous it's ridiculous so go through get all that stuff get the floor mats get the seats everything like that in case you ever have any punctures in the seats you got you know grease or oil all over the floor mats all that stuff just get close-ups um and I know Turo does say, hey, get the front of the car, get the left of the car, back of the car, right side of the car, interior, and you're good. Nah, I mean, you can do that, but at the same time, I do basically every angle that I can that shows any kind of dents, anything that could potentially show up. You'll see, once you start seeing things popping up on your car, angles are huge. 
And once again, I will do a video of how to do all these things, basically make it you know as easy as possible for you guys. But just make sure you are going around 100%. Good, clear photos, rims, tires, get a, a tread depth gauge. Um, they're super cheap and I don't care. Do it every time. <laughs> What's it gonna hurt you, right? Do tread depth on there and just be done with it. Upload those videos as well or upload those pictures as well. And these will be huge for if there is a tire that goes flat or if there's any, any kind of issues with the tire. So going back to the interior of the car, like I said, when that thing's on, don't just put the don't put it in accessory mode. Start it up, and now you have all the gauges in full working order. I even I even get goofy with it, close the door so that way it doesn't even show doors open. I don't want any kind of anything showing that there's any kind of warning lights coming on. So make sure that's all done. And when you're here, now you can check the mileage and your fuel level to make sure that you're legit, especially when you're checking in the car. Normally, when the car's coming back. I do the same thing. I will do a quick walk around, and um, if I notice anything right off the bat, then yes, I'll take more pictures. Um, I try and keep it right around the same, 100, 150 pictures. Uh, the biggest thing that I do check, though, is same thing. You go to the cluster, check the fuel level, check the mileage. You guys know this. That's the only two things they really ask about. But I also check to make sure there's no engine lights, make sure nothing's been tampered with. You're gonna know, you're gonna know what kind of cleaning, you're gonna know if there's anything new at your car, you're in and out of it all the time, you know what's going on. So if you do see anything, make sure you document it. Just take any kind of good pictures you can with it and just basically cover your butt. Like I said, when it comes down to it, if it's not on pictures or it's not on paper, it didn't really happen. So it's kind of your word against theirs, just make sure you cover yourself. Just keep it less headache for you later on. Anyway, I kind of rambled on about that, but it's it's huge. I think that's the biggest thing that you know renters or hosts hosts really have an issue with. I don't know about you guys, but I'm sure you probably are seeing the same thing I am. There's a lot of new renters, ones that don't have any experience with the Turo platform, and that's because of everything that's going on with car rentals. You know, Hertz, Budget, Enterprise, all of them are short on cars, so now you get we're getting more and more newbies. So. When I go through all my pictures with my cars and I do my check-in with my customers, I make sure I tell them too, hey, if there's anything that stands out, let me know. Take pictures of it yourself. That way it covers yourself and just go that extra step. Hey, if there's anything that you have questions about, let's bring it up right now or anything that comes up, you know, send pictures. But bottom line, none of their pictures are gonna be better than everything that you're taking on yours. So just stick to that theory, just customer service, cover yourself, and you should be set. There are gonna be a few knuckleheads out there, which it's, it's gonna happen. You're in basically customer su support. You're building a brand, you're building a business, you're gonna to have to deal with it. But that's kind of my take on how to go about it. So hopefully this is some help to you guys. Uh, like I said, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will get more videos like this out to you guys. We'll catch you guys on the next one, later.